Hi, welcome to Prime Recap. A mutant snake manages to escape from a laboratory, leaving a trail of bodies in its path. Now a scientist and her team must neutralize the threat before its eggs hatch. Today we will recap the story of the 2008 movie Anaconda 3, Offspring. In the middle of the forest, a group of hunters are out looking for a giant snake. Suddenly, Hammett and his team are surprised by the unexpected appearance of Anaconda and begin shooting at the creature, hoping to contain it. However, almost all of the gang members end up being eliminated until Hammett manages to bring down the snake and Peter is impressed with his boss's skill. A few weeks later, Mr. Murdoch pays a visit to his company and is received by Pincus, who is the supervisor of the pharmaceutical industry Wexel Hall. The businessman is then taken to the laboratory, where he sees live footage of the cell where Anaconda is being held. At this moment, Professor Kane appears and reveals that his team has managed to produce a synthetic serum that has conferred several modifications to the snake's body, which have made it an even bloodier predator. The problem is that, for the time being, the drug is only effective in snakes and is not yet approved to be tested in humans. In mice, the application of constant doses of serum slows down their aging, but these animals always end up dying at the end of the experiment, which indicates that the substance is also lethal for humans. Murdoch wishes to see the giant snake in person, so he is taken to the aquarium where it is being kept. The environment is completely absent of light in order to create a prolonged sleep cycle for the creature, but still the businessman is startled to see the monster. Just then, Dr. Amanda Hayes enters the room and introduces herself. The woman has recently started working at Wexel Hall and has already identified a few things that need to be adjusted, such as the size of the cage where Anaconda is being kept. Upon seeing the owner visiting the facility, the doctor does not miss the opportunity to talk to him personally, in an attempt to propose a solution to these problems. When Amanda returns to the lab, Kane goes after her and tries to convince her about the project, because he really believes in the importance of the serum they are developing. However, the doctor is not satisfied with the work they are doing in that company, because the research is not following the ethical standards imposed by the law. Upon seeing Murdoch in person, Amanda noticed that the man has symptoms indicating that he has cancer and is trying to hasten the development of the medication just to avoid his imminent death. However, still, Kane believes that they should continue the research and claims that once completed, the serum will be able to save cancer patients and reverse Alzheimer's. However, Amanda is aware of the company's negligence and is afraid that something will turn out differently than expected. Meanwhile, Murdoch is curious to see, in detail, the changes the serum was able to cause in the snake and shines a flashlight toward the cage, despite Pincus' advice not to do so. Suddenly, the creature starts attacking the glass and a warning signal is given. Daryl then releases the sedative gas in order to tranquilize the snake, but it continues trying to destroy the bulletproof glass and pierces the trainee's body with its spiny tail. At that instant, Pincus and Murdoch run for help, and the officials quickly flee, as they are completely terrified to discover that the monster has broken free. Professor Kane then asks the security guard to close all exits in order to prevent the creature from escaping, and Amanda goes to get some weapons in order to eliminate the anaconda. As Pincus leads Mr. Murdoch out, the scientists walk through the facility in search of the mutant. One of the security guards is investigating the vent when he is violently attacked and ends up losing his head. After checking that the snake is no longer in its cage, the scientists go to the laboratories and find that a large part of their colleagues have been slaughtered. It doesn't take long before they realize that the male has also broken free and attacks Kane, wrapping himself around his body. It then latches onto the professor's head while Amanda hides and hears to her friend being devoured. Outside the facility, Pincus is relieved that he managed to escape alive, and Mr. Murdoch orders his employee to clean up the mess without involving the authorities. To do this job, the man needs to call in Grozny and his team. A few miles away, Hammett trades a rhino horn with some criminals. However, when he leaves, he is surrounded by two thieves who intend to take his money. Suddenly, he receives a call from Pincus, who informs him of the situation and asks for Hammett's help once again to lead the search team. At this point, the man attacks the thieves and throws one of them out the window. After getting rid of the madman, he gets into his car and drives to the facility. Meanwhile, Pincus explains to the team what danger they will face and informs them that the mission is to capture, dead or alive, an 18-meter long snake. To make the job easier, they rely on the help of a tracker that, according to Pincus, is attached to the animal's skin and can be used to track it. The supervisor suggests that the team wait for Hammett to arrive, but Captain Grozny decides to go ahead to try to stop the snakes before more people fall victim to their attacks. Before leaving, Amanda suggests that Pincus ask for the army's help to capture the animal, but he states that the situation is under control and it would be a bad idea to involve the government in this situation, as it could bring serious problems to the company. So, to ensure that the snakes are stopped, 
The doctor offers to accompany the team, and they all drive to a farm where a lonely man lives. In the morning, the farmer hears a strange noise and takes his rifle to go to the barn to check what is going on. Once there, he realizes that the place is empty and his goat has disappeared. Believing that there is some ferocious animal nearby, the man cautiously walks around the place and climbs a wooden ladder to check if there is someone hiding up there. As the guy is going through the hay, something comes up behind him and the farmer ends up falling before he can see what's up there. After the fall, his goat approaches and he realizes that there are no predators around. Again, he climbs the stairs and tries to get his rifle before returning home. However, one of the wooden steps breaks and the man ends up hitting his head during the fall, which causes him to faint. A few minutes later, the farmer wakes up and realizes that he is being devoured by a giant snake, which swallows his entire body at once. He then takes shelter in the barn. A short time later, the hunting party arrives at the farm and spreads out to investigate the place. Nick and Andre check the house and find that there is no one inside. Meanwhile, Sophia and Victor go to investigate the barn. Suddenly, Dragosh starts shooting and everyone is startled, believing that he has found the snake. However, they soon realize that their companion was only startled by a chicken. When everyone is in the barn, the body of a goat falls to the ground and Amanda soon realizes that that animal served as food for the mutant anaconda, but the snake ended up spitting out its meal because it didn't like the taste. Sophia is investigating the area and finds something disheartening. She spots the snakeskin and Pincus collects the tracker that was stuck to it. Now, the group has no way to locate the beast. Also, the skin change indicates that the anaconda is growing too fast and Amanda starts to get even more worried. Captain Gosney is putting together a plan of action to detect the monster when suddenly a giant thorn pierces his chest. His friends then start shooting and chase the snake while Amanda and Pincus try to save Gosney's life. Dragosh goes to check on his friend when suddenly the snake appears and bites his head off. Accidentally, the man pulls the trigger and starts shooting at one of the vehicles, which ends up exploding. Pincus then goes to the trunk of the other vehicle and grabs the first aid kit from Amanda, who is trying at all costs to save Gosney's life. However, despite being a brilliant doctor, the woman is unable to help him, as all his internal organs have been destroyed. Meanwhile, the rest of the group chases the animal through the forest, but the truth is that the snake has returned to the farm and is about to devour Amanda, who is cleaning her dirty hands of Gosney's blood. Luckily, when the woman is cornered, Hammett appears and starts shooting at the creature, which eventually gives up its prey and decides to flee. The hunter quickly mobilizes the entire team to surround the anaconda, but Pincus decides to abandon the mission and informs them that he will wait for his friends in the barn. While Andre, Nick and Hammett use a tracker to locate the snake, the remaining surviving members use a jeep to chase it. Sophia is at the wheel and Victor tries to shoot the snake. Suddenly, the animal disappears and, when it returns, attacks the man's face. Desperate, Sophia tries to flee with the vehicle, but ends up overturning the car and causing a serious accident. When she is thrown out, the hunter breaks her left leg and cannot get up. Victor loses consciousness during the accident and Amanda is unable to revive him. Minutes later, the anaconda appears and swallows Sophia in a single mouthful. Amanda tries to go unnoticed by hiding inside the vehicle, but when she hears her friend's voices, she decides to scream for help. As a result, she becomes the target of the giant snake and the jeep starts to catch fire. The doctor must get out of the vehicle before it explodes, and must be careful not to get eaten on the way. During her escape, Amanda ends up falling into a mud puddle and is surrounded, once again, by the mutant that she herself helped create. The woman is face to face with the snake when Hammett appears and starts shooting. Although not able to eliminate it, the man manages to wound the snake with his bullets. It is already getting dark, so the group decides to return to the farm and rest in order to return to the hunt the next morning. After the shower, the woman begins to reflect on all the eliminations Anaconda has caused and on all the loved ones she has lost. At this point, she feels guilty, because she knows that she played a major role in the creation of this ruthless predator. As she leaves the house, Amanda spots Hammett and Pincus talking and approaches them to speak with them. At that moment, the two men change the subject and the doctor soon realizes that they are up to something. Since the mission to eliminate the snake was a failure, she says she will call in the army to help them. Hammett then presses her and asks if Amanda is hiding some information. Then, the scientist decides it is time to tell the truth and reveals that the anaconda will very soon have cubs. In less than 24 hours, new mutant snakes will be on the loose and the entire country will be infested. Upon hearing this, Hammett reveals that he has shot one of the snakes with a tracking dart and states that the next morning they will find it. That evening, the man approaches the scientist with a cup of coffee and tries to strike up a conversation with her. Amanda asks if he came over to apologize, but finds out that the hunter intends to offer her a new job. 
not even wanting to know what this job is about, the woman gets up and decides to enter the house, because she knows that no good and honest proposal can come from Hammett. In the morning, the group goes out looking for the monster and Amanda stays in the vehicle following the tracker while the rest of the group breaks into an old industrial park. Through a radio communicator, the woman gives the coordinates for her team to reach the exact location where the anaconda is. The hunters then surround the creature and unload their bullets into the monster. However, they soon realize that what is on the other side of the wall is only the body of a man who has been devoured and subsequently expelled by the serpent. Now it is impossible to know where the snake is, but Pincus ends up finding out the hard way, as he is alone outside providing cover for his friends when he has his body pierced by the animal's tail. Upon hearing his friend's screams, Nick rushes to help him, but it is too late, as the man has had his organs destroyed and is already losing consciousness. Minutes later, Amanda uses the radio communicator to call for help, as snakes are approaching the vehicle. When the rest of the team arrives on the scene, the woman reports that the anaconda has escaped, and everyone gathers to chase it until they reach a lake. In this way, they discover that the monsters have hidden in the water and are on their way to the city, which is on the other side of the river. If the female releases her eggs in one of those buildings, thousands of people will be at risk, as they will be hunted down to serve as food for the hatchlings. Faced with this situation, where the entire country is at risk, Nick decides it is time to call in the army. So, even against his will, Hammett picks up the phone and calls Major Razor in order to inform him about the situation. After asking for reinforcements, the man convinces his team to continue the mission while the army does not show up to help them. On the other side of the river, a boy is playing with his electric boat. As he walks towards his mother, he sees two giant snakes slithering and disappearing into the forest. After much searching, Hammett finds the tracks left in the ground, which indicate the path the snakes have taken. Just then, Andre, his companion, contacts Nick to inform him of their coordinates and asks them to follow them. Amanda is at the wheel and was planning to follow the route that would take them to the meeting point when she happens to spot an abandoned factory and soon realizes that this is the perfect place for a giant snake to hide along with its young. While walking through the forest looking for new clues, Andre and Hammett spot snake blood in the bushes and begin to follow the tracks. When they arrive at the factory, Amanda spots the anaconda and Nick tries to contact his friends to report its location. However, there is no phone signal in that area and the pair must enter alone. They walk cautiously on the spot and have to be careful not to make noise and reveal their location. The two friends feel terrified as they walk through that completely dirty and damp place and are alert for any noise. The plan was to approach slowly so as not to reveal her position. However, it all goes down the drain when Nick is startled by the presence of some rats and starts shooting everywhere. After a few minutes of following the blood trails in the bushes, Hammett spots the factory and realizes that this is where the snakes are hiding. While climbing the stairs to get to the second floor of the facility, Nick is captured by the anaconda, which uses its thorn to pierce the hunter's chest. In an attempt to save her friend, Amanda starts shooting, but her bullets run out and she is left completely defenseless. Nick is already about to die, but he still feels a responsibility to fulfill his mission. So he takes a grenade that was kept in his pocket, and after removing the pin, he extends his arm so that the snake can grab his hand. Thus, on his last move, Nick manages to blow up the creature, but Amanda remains unharmed as she hides behind a wall so that she is not hit by the debris. The explosion attracts the attention of Andre and Hammett, who run towards the factory to help their friends. Before entering the facility, Hammett asks Andre to go ahead and picks up the phone to report his location. Just then, Razor calls Mr. Murdoch's assistant and asks her to transfer the call. The man then claims that everything is going as planned and Murdoch reminds him that this mission is confidential, so no one can know anything about it. A few hours earlier, when he said he would call the army, Hammett was lying. In fact, he had called his business partner, and together they were planning a way to get a good deal of money out of the businessman. It doesn't take long before the two hunters find Amanda and the trio begins to execute a plan to blow up that place. Suddenly, Hammett eliminates Andre with a shot, and the scientist is surprised by this attitude, as she did not expect the man to be a traitor. After disarming her, Hammett tries to convince Amanda to join a new project with him and reveals that Murdoch will pay $10 million for a single mutant anaconda hatchling. At this point, the doctor has two choices, take a bullet in the head and be served as dinner for the hatchlings, or work for Murdoch and continue her research. Since she has no other choice, Amanda decides to accept the job offer, but when Hammett lets her go, she attacks him and manages to disarm him. The scientist never planned to work for Murdoch and only pretended to accept the position to find an opening to get rid of Hammett. After striking him several times, Amanda manages to knock the traitor out, but ends up being captured and must use a knife to defend herself. The woman then pierces Hammett's abdomen and then activates the bomb that Andre intended to use to blow up that place. 
one of the giant snakes is still alive and the hatchlings approach Hamid with the intention of devouring him. However, the man is more concerned with disarming the bomb and tries to reach it at any cost. However, he is unable to stop it from detonating and the entire factory is destroyed by the explosion. After accomplishing her mission, Amanda gets into her vehicle and drives away from the place. Minutes later, Razor shows up at the factory and realizes that one of the hatchlings has managed to survive. So he captures the animal and brings it to Murdoch in exchange for the $10 million he will receive as a reward for his service. While driving, the man spots Amanda standing in the middle of the road. After all that has happened, the scientist decides to get rid of all her research about the Anaconda project and burns all her studies in a bonfire. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.